two CAOs quit in less than a month, and there's this NYSE story. I'm still waiting to receive my Ocean 1, but this is very concerning. Can you make a video? Of course. It's been a tough couple days for Fisker. The New York Stock Exchange has issued a non-compliance notice because of its late quarterly filing. A filing that must be difficult because their chief accounting officer, Floris Buting, and I apologize in advance if I didn't pronounce that correctly, Florus Buting has just resigned. Even less confidence inspiring, that comes right after their last chief accounting officer, John Finucian, resigned. So what's really going on? And if you're like me, you probably have questions. Was their most recent chief accounting officer just a placeholder person so Fisker could complete its Q3 earnings call? Is Fisker doing something dishonest financially? And of course, there's the survival question. If you take Fisker at its word, they seem like they'll make it to the next quarter. But based on this, Fisker's word may not be something to trust. Fisker has six months to file their quarterly report from Q3 or face delisting. If they're delisted, it's most likely the death of the company. I'll release this video as close to market close as possible, so this is the current stock price for Fisker, which demonstratively shows what the current confidence in the company is from investors. With extensions and grace periods, Fisker could be as late as a year from now filing their Q3 earnings. In a release from Fisker, they say, quote, the company is working diligently to ensure appropriate Appropriate disclosures are made in the Form 10-Q and expects to file the Form 10-Q within the next few days. So what can we conclude from this? I think the only conclusion you can confidently draw is that the staffing problem at Fisker encompasses 100% of the company. It was mentioned on the earnings call by Dr. Gita Gupta Fisker that they were hiring in the accounting department and by reporting their receipt of notice of the late filing, they obviously understand how many resources they need to dedicate to this issue. But Fisker has other issues. If you got a car that was imperfect, or running but not fully functional, you probably haven't had any kind of a resolution yet, at least in the United States. Based on the information I've received on the folks from Europe, the customer experience is better than it is currently in North America. Fisker has a compliance problem in Canada. There are vehicles in Canada, however they can't be delivered because of regulatory red tape. And for those with an ocean that runs and functions, some of those folks are having trouble finishing or successfully installing their software updates. I made a whole video on the Fisker customer experience, you can check that out in the description. Another piece of Fisker news involves the Fisker Ocean Sport. Some people are being asked, including myself, to confirm their payment method right now for the Fisker Ocean Sport, which shows an ambition for Fisker to start building Ocean Sports soon. However, the EPA has not rated the Fisker Ocean Sport, so the range is unknown, and we have yet to see one exist. That's actually the same story for the Fisker Ocean Ultra. People have VINs, they're getting notifications that their Ultra unit has been produced, but we have yet to see an Ultra in real life. On top of that, some of the most important features for the Fisker Ocean are completely and totally unreleased. The traction control, the vehicle to home functions, as well as the vehicle to load function, much of the safety suite, the auto parking, the adaptive cruise control, all of these software features are currently unreleased. Bringing me to the poll that I recently put out on my channel. I didn't really give any no options in the questions, but still in one way or another, about 40% of you guys told me to wait before I confirm my Fisker Ocean Sport. And as of this moment, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'd like to see software roll out before I'm comfortable confirming my Ocean. But more importantly, I would like to see Fisker Ocean 1 owners' issues solved. Because I'm much more willing to take delivery of a vehicle that is not software complete than I am to take a vehicle with a problem that Fisker can't solve. And I'm not in a position where I need an EV. And I know a lot of you use this channel for educational purposes and to determine what your decision might be as a consumer. And if you need another vehicle, the Fisker Ocean really right now isn't the best bet. There's a good chance you'll have functionality and the vehicle will run, but there may be situations where you absolutely cannot tolerate an unreliable vehicle, at which point the Fisker Ocean will become unreliable and possibly without resolution. In addition to that, I have concerns about registering my vehicle. I don't know of anyone who has registered their vehicle in my state. If you have a West Virginia Fisker Ocean, let me know how that's gone. But people are having issues getting the documents they need in order to register. And Fisker has also reported that they have separate teams dedicated to each state. 
and with such a low volume of everything in my state, I seriously doubt anyone has figured out exactly what to do to register my vehicle. And finally, let's end off with some of your comments. We've completed production of your Ultra. When do you think I'll get it? Fisker was able to deliver 100 vehicles a day once. And that's exactly how they mentioned it on the earnings call. If we assume 100 a day is their current delivery rate, which would account for any struggles they have ramping because obviously they're trying to get to that 300 a day. That's 90 days if you do the math. Assuming everything goes perfectly and they are able to do 100 units per day. And your Ultra is absolutely next in line. Disclaimer, there's no way to tell. And I could totally be wrong. Thanks for your comment. What is the most up-to-date version? 1.09, 1.10 is the next version. It is two parts. Software release data is at FiskerInc.com slash software hyphen release. Received a call last night from a Fisker rep asking me if I can bring my ocean to a nearby OTA event. Didn't really give any information on what that was. Has anyone received a similar call? I just wanted to put this out there to see if anyone else has any data. Let me know in the comments. What is considered a binding contract? This is in regards to the tax credit. Is there an income requirement? No, because it's the old rules. The old rules have no income requirements. You cannot claim an ocean tax credit with the new rules. If you didn't convert your reservation to a deposit in August of 2022, before the Inflation Reduction Act was signed, you are not eligible for a tax credit in the United States. The new rules have nothing to do with you. The old rules is the only way to claim it. And you had to have done that before August 16th, 2022. Great question. And finally, will the pair have NACS? Fisker's current commitment to NACS is 2025. I would think that a 2025 model built in the U.S., it would only make sense to give it NACS. But you could end up with an adapter. There's no way to tell. It hasn't been published. And that's it, everybody. For more of your recent comments, I did an entire video. Check it out here. Subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.